welcome to The Drum on Station 9. Tonight, the death of Osama bin Laden and what it means for the future of Al-Qaeda. Our panel tonight, James Brown from the Lowy Institute for International Policy, John Barron from ABC News Radio, and in Melbourne, Peter Khalil from the University of Sydney's Centre for International Security Studies. Well, it's taken nearly 10 years, but the United States has finally tracked down and killed the most wanted man in the world, Osama bin Laden. The Al-Qaeda chief, along with his son and two others, were killed in a firefight with American forces at Abbottabad in Pakistan. US President Barack Obama announced the news to a surprise White House media conference. I determined that we had enough intelligence to take action and authorized an operation to get Osama bin Laden and bring him to justice. Today, at my direction, the United States launched a targeted operation against that compound in Abbottabad, Pakistan. A small team of Americans carried out the operation with extraordinary courage and capability. No Americans were harmed. They took care to avoid civilian casualties. After a firefight, they killed Osama bin Laden and took custody of his body. For over two decades, bin Laden has been al-Qaeda's leader and symbol and has continued to plot attacks against our country and our friends and allies. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat al-Qaeda. Yet his death does not mark the end of our effort. There is no doubt that al-Qaeda will continue to pursue attacks against us. We must and we will remain vigilant at home and abroad. Peter Khalil, what impact will the death of Osama bin Laden have on the future of al-Qaeda? Attacks against us. I think um, uh, the real issue for al-Qaeda is uh, this is another huge blow for them following up on the, uh, the democracy movement that we've seen sweeping across the Middle East and North Africa because al-Qaeda for so long... Uh, their ideology had been one of violent jihad to remove these autocratic, despotic leaders. And uh, that's happened relatively peacefully in, in, in the Middle East and North Africa, with the exception of Libya, of course. And now they've lost their figurehead, uh, their, their spiritual leader, in a sense, in Osama bin Laden. So that's a physical blow as well as an ideological blow. And I think it's going to have an immense impact on the ability of the organisation from a propaganda point of view. Um, tactically... They will still remain a threat. There are, they are so decentralised that some of their um, uh, the franchises, if you like, around the world will continue to pose a threat to Western targets and to uh, other countries. That won't go away. Um, once you chop off the head of the snake, another one will grow in its place and Zawahiri will probably take that figurehead roll up uh, from Osama bin Laden. But they've certainly suffered two significant blows uh, in, in the early part of 2011. James, is that the way you see it? I agree, and I think it's telling that Peter's used the word franchise. Al-Qaeda is a business now. It is a business model. It has a propaganda wing. Um, Osama's been the chairman who, whilst he props up with a few statements every now and then, really hasn't been involved in the day-to-day -day running of the organisation for a couple of years. So the chairman's gone, the board of directors are still there, the CEO is still there in, in Zawahiri. Um, I think they'll continue business as usual, but they will have taken that big propaganda blow. John, what, what impact do you think? Well, to take up the franchise metaphor, uh, KFC didn't go out of business when Colonel Sanders died. He's still on all their pictures. Um, nobody's quite turning uh, Osama bin Laden into Che Guevara on every uh, young student's T-shirts, but in parts of the world, he is that powerful. He'll remain a powerful figure. I'd like to believe that this diminishes that, but in a way, perhaps it'll have the reverse effect because he's not this ageing man with kidney disease uh, hiding away from the world. He's now a martyr. And, John, how psychologically important is it to America, do you think? Well, we've seen the uh, remarkable scenes uh, at, uh, at uh, Ground Zero in, in New York City and in Washington, D.C. as well. It brings to mind images of VJ Day 1945. It looks like the war is over, but as the President said there, the war is not over. The question is, once the euphoria dies down, will the Americans decide, you know what, it is. Why are we fighting? We've killed Osama bin Laden. We're seeing vision there, John, of um, some of the people outside uh, Washington. And that's quite late at night, remember, because it was about 10.30, yeah. maybe 11.30 at night by the time President Obama spoke. So those pictures we're seeing there are probably midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning. A whole lot of people have uh, decided to go down and, and to celebrate. Yeah, this is continuing on as we speak. And what is remarkable about this as well is we're seeing firefighters, we're seeing first responders, we're seeing victims and uh, victims' families from 9-11 from coming out onto the streets. So this is, this is a monumental day. This has been uh, the end of a 10-year journey for the United States. It is a nation that's changed. There will be a period of reassessment now as to what this means for the United States. Do they wish to continue to engage 
in what is still a very hostile world, or do they want to pull back into tra traditional American isolationism now that the mission is accomplished? Eight years today since George W. Bush was on the, the deck of the carrier saying mission accomplished, today we can perhaps add a mission really accomplished in the minds of many. Uh, Peter, I wanted to put a quote to you that Robert Fisk said on News 24 today, and he, he said that he, he thought that bin Laden was is really irrelevant now. Now, Robert Fisk, of course, is the independent journalist who's, who's interviewed bin Laden three times over the years, and he said, I don't really think al-Qaeda al needs a leadership. I don't doubt very much bin Laden was still the leader. He was certainly the founder, but to suge suggest he was in control of al-Qaeda is complete rubbish. I think he spent most of his time hiding. Well, look, uh, Stephen, uh, in, in a sense he's right, and we talk about a franchise structure, a decentralised structure of al-Qaeda, and as I said earlier, I don't think the tactical threat that emanates from al-Qaeda will necessarily disappear with Osama bin Laden being taken, taken out. But what they will suffer is a, a huge... Uh, well, it's not propaganda, but a huge public affairs blow, if you like, in that he was such an important figurehead. He certainly wasn't someone who was controlling the operations or even planning the operations in the last five, six, seven years. That's true. Uh, he may have been responsible operationally for, for s September 11, but certainly he's been on the run in the last five years. So Fisk is, is quite right in that regard. What we don't really know yet is uh, whether that public affairs blow is going to really degrade further al-Qaeda's message across the Middle East and North Africa and it sort of coincides as I said with what's happening there now and the fact that their ideological approach 